Um, Tyler, do you have a one last question? I thought I had it last week. I, I hope I hope you, that All right. No, no, I just wanted to see if you have one because I do have one. Don't worry. I'm yeah. not going to have us wondering and thinking for five minutes. Um, yeah. I want to thank Dylan for this because he uh, popped this into uh, to uh, message me with this uh, this question just before the podcast. Um, and it, is, it, is, it might be able to think her, but uh, – who would be the four players on your Vancouver Canucks Mount Rushmore? And you cannot cheat and put oh, the Sedins wow. as one. No, I wouldn't. Well, no, I wasn't going to do that. But uh, oh. I think I think those two and Pavel Bure would be would be three of the four for me. And then it's really tough to you know come up with you know decide on who the fourth one would be. You know, again, you're trying to compare eras here, and the the franchise is what 53 years now. So, mm-hmm. uh, ooh, that's a tough one. See, I went, yeah, I had Sadine, Sadine, Burre, and then I went with Luongo just because the the impact that he had on that team, taking them from having having the, the, the players and like starting to see the Sedins build and all that, but he was the, he was sort of the anchor in net. That yeah, allowed them was, to take that next he's step. one of the ones I'd be deliberating. I think it might be a bit of a stretch with Trevor Linden, but um, as much as know, I, I love Linden, I just didn't you know. think he had the, the high end impact on the team that the, these, those four players did. Yeah. Yeah, and it's hard. I mean, it's hard to, you know, I just don't know enough about the, you know, the 1970s Canucks and the, and the team that, you know, went to the final in 1982. It's hard to hard to pick somebody out from that era. That's not a bad four, though, with Luongo, the Sedins, and Pavel Burry, but that's very, there's a little recency bias, perhaps, with that. Yeah, I just don't, like, you look at the, the 82 run, and that was very much a Cinderella run. It's not like they had any, any sustained success there mm-hmm. Murray's arguably the just the had the most impacts like commercially um and just exciting like excitement wise for yeah. for the uh for the franchise Luongo's the best goaltender um that the, the the franchise has had um and then you have uh the Sedins and then <laughs> You can't re. There's there's no argument there. Like it's just yeah. Um, they, I think the only argument there is that whether or not it's cheating to put put them in as one to allow you to do someone yeah. else. <laughs> someone else. Yeah. I exactly. think it's it's. I think if I think that it is. So I think you have to make that that choice of they take up two spots and you're just picking the other two. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you've got Naslins, um, but it just didn't quite. Didn't quite have the 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 postseason success, let alone they didn't win as good a regular season success as you would think from that team. Um, other than that, there's no one, no one else I think comes close, other than like maybe Smeal, but yeah. Um, bring this up from Dylan here. Um, the the comparison of McLean and Luongo. Um, I just McLean was good, but he was never an elite goalie. Luongo was an elite goalie. Yeah, Luongo was robbed of hardware that he never got. McLean wasn't wasn't in in that same echelon as as yeah. McLean's McLean was never in the same really- echelon. It's really to do with the one Stanley Cup run, whereas Luongo, it was like his entire tenure with the Canucks and, you know, his career and how that stacks up against other Canucks goalies in their careers. There's a difference there for sure, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I know we're coming up to um, the Luongo uh, Ring of Honor uh, right. game yes. here soon. Yes. Um, so that debate's gonna come up again, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's if you're gonna pick four, I think those are the four I would I would have there. Mm-hmm.